Wait, what do we have here? Carbon fork, carbon frame, specialized Robea lead. Is this a diamond in a rough? Or is it not? Let's find out after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to Annoy Guy Bicycles, hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the guy on this old bike series. We are going to do a, is it a diamond in the rough or not? We're going to check out this bike and see if it actually holds up to the potential of the ones I've actually worked on before. Um, I've done a lot of these Specialized Robea Elites in several years within this time frame, and they're actually a very stellar bike, but I've had a few that are really rough and took a lot of work. So... Is this one of those diamonds I was able to polish up and bring to the market? Or is it one of our graveyard bike frames that I have hanging that I'm either waiting to repair or make a lamp out of? But yeah, let's just dive into this and I'm gonna take you on to this little journey of, is this a diamond? Anyway, ah, so this particular bike I picked up on the original owner. So there has great potential of it being good but i know it's right off the bat the wheel is not oem um, talking to him it turns out that it was an upgraded set that he put on here from king creek and king creek made some really nice wheel sets back in the day not sure if they're making any new ones today uh, they're also known for head sights as well so we're just going to tear into this um, inspecting the front wheel the tire actually both tires actually look pretty good the hub is smooth and, you know, I think it was pretty straight and true. So, just needs to be cleaned up. Diving into the rear. Check this guy out. So, yeah, we'll eventually get to the frame and wrap it up with cables and new cables and housing with new bar tape. Because, as you can see, the, the OEM silver, or he may have rewrapped it with silver when they made silver, um, it's looking kind of... Eh, dingy and worn and uh, we definitely want to make sure that is cleaned up um, so yeah check this out free hub body feels a little tad loose but we'll inspect that and see if it's actually not too bad if the free hub body is loose and there's some damage it might be kind of difficult to get a free hub body for this vintage uh, so if a free hub body is damaged on this particular model of wheel you might be looking to replace the wheel set, so let's just dive in. And looking at this guy, most of the dirt's in the middle range. Uh, so most likely the guy only shifts like in three or four gears. That could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending how much he rode. Uh, there's a couple types of riders out there, and I make kind of fun of it. There's the grinders that just like get in one gear and go and go and go and tear up stuff. And then you have the ones that are spinners that just kind of have a high revolution and they do um, a lot of shifting and it goes up and down the drivetrain and provides an equal distribute of wear on the drivetrain itself. So if you're a grinder, that means you pour in those one gears and that's all you leave it in. There's a good chance you're going to wear out that chain and you're going to a good chance you're going to wear out, well, you're going to wear out the chains regardless, but a little bit faster. In addition to, you're going to wear out the cassette and those particular cogs because you're not distributing the workload over. So that prevents you from having multiple chains to one cassette. So keep that in mind. So back into the bike here, looking at the brakes. They look pretty good. The chain, we're just doing the initial tear down inspection. And whoop, we're at a 0.75 on this chain. So this chain will need to be replaced. So replacing it with a new chain is going to be a tighter pitch and what happens is if those cogs in the back that I just shown are worn to the point when you put on a new chain, it's not going to line up and it's going to ovalize these teeth where that person's rode 
a lot where the chain's not going to sit correctly and it'll, it'll what they call skip. Uh, in other words, you put a lot of torque on it, like standing up and goes crook. And um, that's kind of unnerving, especially when you are standing up and riding. So that's something you want to avoid altogether. Uh, yeah, so new cables and housings. These are all going to get cut right off. I do keep the housing pieces for reference um, for recutting the new ones. So we're going to pull these guys off. And also take that. Now the cables and housing don't look too terrible as in rust or contaminant. So either the individual had these worked on before, which is great to replace them. Ugh. That one's just kinked, so we're good there. A little bit of um, dust, but that's well ex expected at this particular age of a bike kind of thing. And let's take these brakes off. Then we'll inspect the frame make sure we're not into too much of a scary and the thing is is if the frame is damaged you're going to have a bucket of box of parts and looking for a new frame or you're going to be looking for it to be repaired carbon can be repaired that is not a problem um, actually if it's done right it's actually a stronger joint than where it was broken before but when you go to resell people are going to question so if you have your carbon fiber repaired have it professionally done and have the paperwork to document that so the new owner understands that it's been damaged and it's been repaired now, kind of full disclosure it's kind of a common common courtesy type thing so all right, getting parts off, getting prepped to clean. Particular one takes a big old Allen wrench. It's a through bottom bracket. Ugh. These sometimes get pretty tight, and when you get them to break free, they sting your hands sometimes. Whew. And that can be a little painful. <laughs> sore hands days of ibuprofen for sure when you take these little guys off you kind of want to make sure that you're looking for these little, little little spacers you can see it's going to blue in there um, they sometimes slide off and pop on the floor and you're like why is my spacing off so that's one of those things you want to definitely check also ooh. We got rust development underneath here. I better check the bottom bracket, make sure it's not not too uh, damaged. Oh, like like I said, there's that micro on the other side. Keep track of that. Well, that might be just need to be cleaned up, but what that means there's sealed bearings underneath, so that's good. Got rust development under there, underneath there. That means it got some water or did a lot of riding in the rain. It got inside there. It typically happens from either the seat post collar or the drailer or the drailer hole, uh, cable hole on the side. Is you have those contaminants go through and they can get in there. And the water has nowhere really to go. There's not like a drain port on this particular style. There's a sleeve inside there. And that'll kind of trap that moisture. Um, we'll clean it up. It doesn't look too terrible, but it is definitely some surface rust on there. So I'll take a Scarch Bright, Scarch Bright pad disc and clean that all off and make sure we are not in any further disarray with that particular crank set. Um, the teeth look okay on that. And I'm taking off the guide which since it's really kind of hard to unscrew makes me believe something's going on in there so i don't double check that also we're going to check the bottle cage mounts see if these have been compromised oh a little tight but 
so far. Not too bad. These can be fixed too, but it is a very um, challenging repair because you have to cut and drill out the existing rivet that holds the, uh, the bottle cage bolt. So that gives you the potential of damaging the frame, scratching the paint. So we just don't want that. And why that happens or how that happens, some people cross thread that bolt in there or they can, there goes, get some contaminants in there. It's because sometimes there's steel bolts or alloy bolt with a, their alloy usually, or like a very thin metal. Um, and they can get rust inside there or contaminants that can rust. So what I do and what we used to do when we built these new, we put a little dab of grease on them. I do the same thing after I clean it. Um, I, if I need to, I'll thread chase them so they have a clean threads. And then I'll have the bolts with grease so they're easy to go in and out. So the likelihood of that happening is very minimal. All right. Let's grab a rag here. And do a little frame inspection before we dive into the rest. I check each stay, chain stay, seat stay, both sides. I like using a rag with some cleaning solution. That way, if the rag catches on something, I can actually feel it. Also feeling the diameter of the tubing, uh, inspecting for any major chips or dings, that kind of thing. And, uh, and I go, I'm doing the seat tube, down the top, down tube. Just looks like dirt. All right. But I did notice that the headset kind of sticks. It feels smooth, but it does stick. So that might be something I want to pop apart. Take a little look-see and see what we have going on there. All righty. Well... The first wave is done. Looks like we're good so far. Let's uh, dive into the parts and so forth, get them cleaned, and I'll catch up on the back end when we put it all back together. So we're moving right along and we're down to the chain part. Clean all the other parts in the ultrasonic cleaner, this little device over here. It is, uh, most of them are per, per, pretty much came out really well. So, but we, since we measure the chain and we know it's stretched, we're going to measure it link to link, match up the old chain with the new. Woo! Not let it jump off the table. There we go. So my left hand here, it's equal, measuring it up. And if you measure your old chain and your new chain, link to link, you should see the variation of an angle here where the new chain is gonna be shorter. So this is 0.75. So you're right at the recommended uh, measurement on the chain tool that this chain can be replaced. So keep in mind, so when you look at the old chain and you put it in here and it goes right to 0.75. But if you go measure your new chain, this is a SRAM nine speed. I can barely get the tool in there. It snaps in there and there's really no, no play at all. So I've noticed with SRAM chains versus Shimano chains, the SRAMs are, really kind of very secure with the chain tool. If you get a new Shimano chain and there's just a little bit of give, like up to, I don't know, not point, you know, 0.15-ish, somewhere around there, um, it, it, they come from the manufacturer. I just noticed that, it's kind of weird. Like Shimano chains are just like pre-stretched a little bit. That's just, you know, how that is. And you'd think they all come from the same place, but the SRAM chains seem to be just a little more tight, tighter tolerances. So that means if the cassette on this guy is a little more worn, 
that maybe a Shimano will match up a little bit better. It doesn't mean it's better in a sense, but it might shift uh, without having that, that skip. But with a Ceram chain, which has a tighter tolerance, um, is gonna fit a little better. Oh yeah, I gotta cut the chain. <laughs> what am I doing? Getting carried away here. So you measure the length of link, and then I can find my spot where I need to um, chain break. They call it cutting, but it's just basically you're pushing the push pin through. So I'll give you a close up on this. So you're pushing that pin through. You hear it snap. And here you can get it to stop partially, not push it all the way out. Therefore, you can actually save that. In theory, if you're in a pinch, take this extra piece of chain, put it in your pack, and if you ever need to splice your chain on the side of the road, you got a little bit of material to work with. Especially if you're mountain biking, it's always a good one. So, anyhow, let's do a little show of installing the chain here and the, what I do. I like to lace it through the top of the jockey pull or the bottom of the jockey pulley through the top. So it's kind of counterintuitive how I'm talking, but thread it through, go wrap around the small, and. Uh, there's no cables on on this yet so it's not going to have the trailers are going to be in their re relaxed position which is small and small there we go and put my power link Oop. on here pull through and that's when you use this little fancy pliers these uh, pliers are designed to put on and take off. These are the park ones, which work really well. You can probably get a, a copy version of that. Um, they work, you know, depends how many times you take the chain off and on, on and off. But I wouldn't use noodle nose. And I've tried to do it in a pinch. It's a horrible. Get one of these. And if you're using quickly, it's power links. You know, the small ones have power links now too. So, or they call it quick links. And then there's KMC, it has their own version too. So I would get something that would work with any of those. And that way it makes it a lot easier to take on and off your chain. So if you do kind of need to switch out your chains, or if you do the whole waxing thing where they uh, suggest having three chains and you have them waxed, and then you switch them out, it makes it a lot easier to do such a, such a um, experiment with wax chains. Um, anyway, so at this point, going to be cutting cables and housing. I'm just going to go over a couple things that I had to do so far. Everything looks like it's going to be pretty good straightforward out of the gate from here. Um, the shifters themselves turned out to be really smooth. Um, after cleaning them in this Ultrasonic cleaner and re them with the TriFlow, they actually are responsive. The brake pads are good on this guy, as well as the reaction of both um, brakes front and rear it did miss a little spacer for the front brake so i've done my little parts bin and got that the wheels were true uh, the cassette was a little bit loose these particular cassettes have a little allen bolt that ties them all together i keep this separately so it's easy to reach for um, and i have a on a magnet on my tool wall so i know exactly where it is and i put it back this is a very small allen and uh, that tightens up that cassette if that bolt pops out and disappears, it's okay. You can still thread everything together. It's just for ease of cleaning and so forth is all one big chunk. The rear derailleur was a little dirty, but we got it all cleaned up and scraped off all that and relude the pivot. Same thing for the front. The bottom bracket turned out to be pretty smooth. I did clean off all that um, rust material that's on the actual um, uh, spindle portion of the bot uh, crank set and then I coat it really well with grease and therefore if there is get any more water contaminants in there it's going to be less inclined to rust because it's going to have a good coating of grease inside there and I'll double check the seat post to make sure it is properly lubed as well. I did take apart the headset uh, to make sure that binding portion you remember it was having that binding piece well that is actually cleaned all up re-lubed took it what it was is one of those uh, rubber seals had some gunk in it and it was pressing down that's why I was binding the bearings are fine and the actual headset turned out to be very smooth um, as well as the bottom bracket it has a good good flow to it so 
Frame is in immaculate shape, buffed it out, got as much as the scratches that I could with my detailing. The wheels are true, so those are two wins. The componentry is good, except for the chain itself. I won't be able to test that. Um, those rings that are dirty in the metal under a load, I have to test ride that, actually put my weight on it and go. Uh, but the shifting is going to work out great. So let's well, at the end of the road here i'm saying this is a diamond uh it took a little bit of work yes it did need some attention to details but with new all new cables and housing after i'm done with this with new bar tape it is going to be immaculate and it's going to be one awesome ride for somebody just getting into road riding full carbon frame and fork great wheels um, componentry that's a workhorse for shimano and it just keeps going and going and going and yeah you notice this cap is missing on here I have some extra caps, you know, they're um, 3D printed. Uh, I scanned it and 3D printed some of them um, to replace them because these guys are just aesthetic. I mean, they really have no function, but they do look ugly. So I have some nice black with a little bit of color glitter in there to make a little pop to it. And also this paint job is really immaculate in the sun. The clear coat itself has this little fine blue glitter that really pops in the sun. Also, this clear coat is very thick, so the carbon itself has its own coat and you have another layer. I've done and didn't have to do very much cutting at all of like cleaning the clear coat on this guy, but I've, on frames past, like I mentioned before, they've had some rough ones, had to do a lot of cleaning and detailing. Um, yeah, there's like several layers of paint. So this particular paint job is superb for detailing because you got a whole bunch of material to work with to make that frame just come back to life. But anywho, I really recommend you check out these pictures and see how the final result is in the sun. Very hot.